Hi guys, welcome to Coffee Table Comics. Today I am going to color this entire spread from start to finish in my style for Sithra Book 3. I'm going to do it in real time, not sped up, and I'm going to talk about everything I'm doing as I'm doing it. But first I want to say subscribe somewhere. Um, I have a lot of videos that I'm working on and I'm going to keep putting these videos out. If you like tutorials and comics and making comics and interviews about comics, then this is the place for it. And in case you're wondering, I'm working on Sithra, book three. You can order book one right now on Amazon or go to a comic shop and order it. Uh, book two is going to be um, kickstarted pretty soon, so please subscribe and I'll let you know when the Kickstarter is live. This video series will be probably about two and a half hours long and it will be broken up into three videos. So that's it. This is the first part. All right, let's get started. So this is the inked page, full inks, black and white inks that I sent to my flatter. And uh, basically what he gave me was this. So I have these flats and this is before I got the brilliant idea to like give him local colors to work with. And so I have to do a lot of adjusting of the flats. Um, but now I, I, I've given him like a little uh, color pass and so he can follow it and um, it makes it a lot faster now. So anyway, I'll turn on the flats underneath. <laughs> now you can see you know what it looks like under the lines. So I am just going to open up a reference file for myself from from this scene uh, so I can kind of get the colors at least in that same ballpark. Let's see, I don't know where I'll open up. There we go. So I'm going to just move this off onto my second monitor so I can be looking at it. And we will start adjusting these colors. So, I've got our flats. What I like doing is just taking my flats, duplicating them. I turn the flats down to zero and lock it so that if I need to I can still select different parts of my flats from that flat layer that's locked. Um, sometimes I have to fix parts of the flat layer. Most, most of the time I do, but uh, just to start out is I just do that. And I'll tile this from colors or color. And let's see, I'll just, I can just wash this out just, just a little bit, lighten it a little bit so I can see a little better my lines. Make this full screen. In Photoshop, you can push F and make it full screen, toggle between full screen, like full screen without any tools, and then the windowed version. So anyway. I like using this full screen version because then you can kind of move your panel around however you want. Okay. So I guess first things first, I'll start adjusting Vana's colors. And so since I'm going to focus on getting her colors right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just select all of her colors. Q is a quick mask, so you can kind of see what has been selected. Everything else is red. It's kind of like masked, like the old school masking tool, <laughs> you know. Uh, let's see. Looks like she is pretty much all there except her eyes. Fuzzball. See right here, I might. I think I messed up on the inks there a little bit, so I'll, I'll be probably adjusting that a little bit as I as I go. Let's see. Looks to me like 
this needs to be part of her flats because that's part of her tread and just double check looks like I got pretty much all of her no strange missing parts okay so I'm going to go command J and everything I say is on a Mac so these are all shortcuts for a Mac they're similar on PC it's just probably instead of command it's I don't know something else I've used PC you know my whole career doing this stuff at DreamWorks but as soon as I switch over it's like my brain goes completely dead with how to do it on the other system and vice versa so anyway I'm used to Mac right now so this is Mac stuff so anyway here's my flats all on one layer now and I'll just call, tall, call it characters and it's nice because you can lock the pixels then so that you know if you want to if you want to paint you know it, it only goes on those pixels that are that are actually there everything that's transparent you won't paint on that's what this lock pixels is so we have our characters and I might as well separate a couple other things out I'm gonna separate out the sand and the weebles and uh, the rocks so we'll have kind of like four specific parts sand 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 looks like I got all the sand um, except for these little bits Yes, that's a weevil. Okay. And then I'll do command J. I'll title this sand. We'll lock that. So this is kind of, you know, this is a little different than how I do flats sometimes. I mean, as I keep doing these videos, you'll, you'll kind of see that it really depends on what page I'm doing. Like, it, it, my process is really specific to what needs to be done on the spread. So some spreads I, I'll do it a different way because it'll be faster and more efficient a certain way. Um, this one, you know, it just has mainly her and sand and weebles. And so I'm like, well, I'll do it this way. But um, that doesn't mean I do this with every single spread. So uh, let's see. We're going to do the rocks now. It should be pretty simple. Rocks. Oops. And then what else was I going to do? Oh, the weebles. Oops. No one hand. Looks like I'm stuck. Oh, I have a, a window open on the other screen. Okay. Uh, weebles. These strange creatures. And it looks like I got them all, maybe. Okay, Command J. So now, you know, I can turn off. I should be able to have everything. Well, okay, so I didn't get all the weevils. Let's get the rest of these weevils. Wow, I totally missed a lot. Do another command J, and I'll just merge that into the one below. So now I should be able to have, you know, if I turn this off, I should be able to have everything on some layer. There's a little funny white line around things. No, I guess there isn't. Let me see if I turn off the lines. Yeah, it looks, looks like it's pretty much like what I'm looking for is stuff like this there's a little white dot there um, 
and see I have anti-aliasing turned off so it should it should be getting right up to the edge and not like having this fuzzy little white line around things but there's a couple places but you know when you turn on the lines you don't really have to worry about it too much and it looks like looks like everything's pretty much accounted for as far as my flats so I don't really need to use the these flats uh, on this flat layer anymore but you know it's nice to still have them there to select from if you need so let's see so anyway back to the character so we have our characters now and I want to just uh, adjust her colors so that they're right and there's a there's a couple weird things I need to fix and it's not my flatter's fault in any way because I didn't give him any direction on this I just said go color I mean flat you know <laughs> and he, he did what he knew how to do with what I gave him and it actually is surprisingly close to being correct I don't think I would have got it quite that right so let's see her boots are kind of this orange actually I'm gonna make them kind of a little lighter they're they're usually kind of like her outfit is kind of this darker orange and then her secondary outfit parts like her hoodie and boots and and little details are kind of a, like a lighter orange there's something wrong about this though which I need to fix so this will be oops, don't want to well sorry I'm push I'm pushing the wrong buttons I'm nervous you guys you guys are making me nervous So see, if I would have given him my flatter, the uh, color keys, then I wouldn't have to do any of this stuff. So let's see, her legs are black. I think I'm going to just color this one black. And I kind of like how you see the, the highlights there, so I won't... We'll color those in. Let's see. And her shorts are in her. This, all this is this nice orange color. Come on. Don't want to just do it one at a time. Okay, I'll just paint. Look, there we go. Well, no, I don't want to do that. See, I keep changing my mind. Okay. I want to have these separate, so I'll do this. I don't want those to be selected, okay. And then we'll color it. Okay, now she's getting closer to the right colors. I don't know what this purple thing is back there. I'm going to color it as if it's part of her bum. So I'll just, I'll just select it the old school way. Okay. Now for these things, these secondary parts. Oh wait, this is actually, it's actually a weeble. Look at that. That's a weeble. Okay. Does she have, have any other secondary parts to her? No. Okay, so... Color those that. I'll fix this weeble. Put it on the weeble layer. So we'll go blink. And then I'll Command J. Go down here. So now it's part of the weebles. Okay, good. And what else? I gotta adjust her hair. I wonder if it'd be easier to work on it like this. 
Oh, I gotta delete this people too. Lock that. Delete it. Lock it back up again. Okay. Let's see, I'll make these sleeve parts also the same color as her secondary colors. Her secondary clothing colors. Except I didn't want that to be everything on her. Let's see, I'll take away this selection down here on our socks. Okay. See, this is why it's so nice to be able to give a your flatter the the actual colors because it saves you a lot of work at the end. So I'll get these socks to be I don't know a socky color. Hit the colorize button and I don't know put some blues in it. whites and blues and I don't know about this I need to I'll probably figure this out later it might end up being like a light a real light color like the lights hitting her and making it bright there even though it's black cloth and then let's see the only other thing is her boots make this the same color to work with okay um I usually have these kind of like an off an off orangey color so it kind of was like you know that kind of I, I don't know what it is it's kind of like a rubbery traction but it's not black <laughs> doesn't make sense. I have this visual in my mind like as a kid I had these certain boots that had this kind of certain rubber on them and it wasn't like black rubber and it wasn't you know the normal thing it was kind of it, looked, it seemed like like a gummy like gummy bear type not whatever I, I, mean, I don't know why I'm explaining it it's just it looked like that <laughs> So, oh, there, we got to do these two, these little poof balls. Actually, I will just color these the same as that. And then, oh, yeah, we got our hair. And her face. Everything is important. The face and the hair. Oh, I forgot to color that part. Let's see. Her hair, I kind of have this strange blue color um, in shadows and it's this blue color and then I like hit it with a light and turn it white white when it's hit by a light <laughs> um what else what else is there let me just fix these inks and let me make these inks work for me better so what I'm doing is here's the ink layer I'm gonna go to channels if I hit command, hit this RGB, it selects all the white, and then I can go shift command I and it inverses that, inverts that selection, or inverse I guess. Turn off my inks layer now, do another inks, I'll call it inks alpha, and then I just select black and fill that in. So now my inks they look exactly the same and if you zoom in real close there's all the gray value still in it but all the white has been stripped out of the gray value um, so now I can lock these ink lines if I want and paint them certain colors which I'll do that in a little bit but what it does and I'll just throw away this other ink um, so what that allows me to do is just kind of I can edit these a little easier now and 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 work with them easier as I'm manipulating them. I don't have to kind of fix it. I don't know. I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> so I think this is wrong now. I think the sand is not here. I don't know if I need to unlock that or not. And I 
think, well, take this little piece out. I don't know what this is. I think this should be her boot color. And then the weebles, I think this should be weebles. So I'll just select that real quick. color the same as the Weeble color over there. Oops. Not on characters. There we go. Lock those Weeples again. So I think that's I think that's right now. I should probably make this that dark color too. Who knows? It works. That works, though. It works for me. This will all be adjusted, you know, as we get the textures in and everything. And the weevils aren't actually green, so I'll, I'll, I'll be adjusting them kind of globally. <clears throat> okay, so her face colors. Let's finish her colors. Probably just put a little bit more warmth into her face. <clears throat> and I'll just make her eyes and teeth a little. Uh, I'll just make them white. Okay, so she's kind of ready to go. Sand is. Um, let's see. Let's look at our sand in this other picture real quick. Just and I'll just match it. First we gotta turn off all this other stuff. Okay, so we'll take this sand color and Color all the sand, the main sand of that. Actually, I might do that on a separate layer. I just did it on this layer above. And the reason I did that is so that I can I can make a grad above it. So I'll like this lighter version and since I did this mask clipping I think it's called a clipping plane <clears throat> and now it it's it's only doing this gradient over top of the over top of those pixels here does that make sense so we have that let's see I'll delete this and then we'll do the same thing here And I'll do the same thing here. Okay. And then we have this other sand part, which I think I'll just, let's see. I think I'll just color those solid. And since there's a gradient on this, on the horizontal sand, anything that's Kind of dip it, dip, you know, dips down into the sand. I'll leave that gradient off. <clears throat> and we have some stuff over here we gotta figure out. I'll just do that on a separate layer too. So because I want it to kind of still stand apart, I just don't know how much yet. So it might be whiter, it might be dark. Oh, I think whiter looks good. We'll do that. 
and this might need some tweaking because I don't want that to be a solid same color here so what I might do is select this chunk and color it the same since we have it on another selection here, right here, it's it's a broken apart, and then I can actually. What can I do? What can I do? Well, I want to add to that, so. I'm just going to take a paintbrush and paint in, paint in some sand here. Okay. And then we have our other layer. We'll put that over top. And I'll actually cut out kind of with my lasso tool bits, bits of it. That way it's still kind of, it's still there, but you know, it's not, it's not like this whole separate piece of sand color. Okay, we got that. The holes are filled in with this. Let's see. Oh, mama. Okay. I'm going to just put a little grad on these holes. So we'll just say hole grad and okay our lighting is I'll probably have the light source on the bottom. I'll just use white. Maybe I should do a circle. Yes, no, maybe so. Yeah, I don't know. We'll leave it like that for now. See, see how it works as I do the rest of them. I guess I don't need I don't need full on grad on every single one of these because. Um, they're in different places, you know. I'm, I don't know if I like that circle. Eh, yeah, it works okay. The circle grad. Oops, I didn't want to do it on that layer. I wanted to do it here. Okay. Selecting from this layer, going to the layer above it that has the whole grad on it, and you know, just throwing that on there. I don't think I'll put anything on that one. I'll probably end up putting a little bit of shadow on these too, so they'll it'll be defined even more than what I'm doing right now. Let's see. Um, okay, that works. Oh, one more down here. I do that on the other one again. Dang it. Whole grad. Let's do that again. Okay, it's on the right layer. Good. Select from this layer. Go to that layer. Okay. That works for me, I think. Now we'll drop some other things in there and see what happens. Okay, I'm going to save this real quick. Ta-da! And... Sorry, I'm stretching. Oh, I'm making weird noises as I stretch. It's my mom's fault, that's what she does. So I learned it from her.
just joking, Mom. Okay. So we have sand kind of close. Let's get these rocks to be the right colors. I just have them kind of a blue, so I think I just have one layer. Locked. Select that. Done. I could paint some of this water in here because because the idea is that this here's a little puddle of water that she poured and it ran down the side of the the rocks into the uh, sand got all these weebles all riled up so I'll just Kind of add some. Excuse me. I'll just add some. My uh, some something. We'll add something here. Need to look at that last panel though. Look at the continuity, man. It's just all over the place. Um. We'll just we'll just get it close. I mean, you know, it, it's it's drying, so that's why it's different. Because it's been drying. It's hot. It's hot, so the water's drying on the rocks. I mean, you've thrown water on pavement before in, in a hot summer day. It dries, right? There we go. That's my explanation. Okay. We have some water there. I just need to put some water into the sand now. We'll just put that above water sand. Let's see. I'm just making a selection with this lasso tool. Again, I'll copy this sand color, the water sand color. Put it there. We will. Um, so I hit option right in between the layers and see how it it basically adds it to this clipping plane which is it's clipping it onto this so let's paint a little more man my mouse is all tripping out or my it's not tripping out anymore I think recording this stuff kind of makes hogs up a lot of my my RAM. And it makes it kind of spastic. Kind of like me. Okay. So that's fine. Let's, well, maybe. We'll do that. I might actually erase those lines where I tried to kind of draw the water. There. Sometimes it's nice to have line outlines of things, and other times it's kind of distracting. <laughs> okay, so. There's that. I don't think I'll worry about it back behind her here. Because I want, want the emphasis to be more on her. I might even turn this white. Yeah, actually, the, hmm. she's kind of like, she's fallen kind of towards the rock, even though there's not a lot of room. So, so I'll, I'll probably change this so this isn't rocks anymore just take that out what we'll do is we'll make a background color or we'll just say sky and the sky color is not really in my reference piece but I will grab it from another piece of from another page so I might actually have this ground like grad even more until until it turns white 
I'll just take out this little horizon line here. Take out the inks for the horizon line, that is. It's kind of like implied here, but it doesn't matter too much. Okay. Um, so now I just want to work on the weebles a little bit, and then we will throw in some textures. Or maybe we will work on... Um, what? What will we work on? We'll work on shadows, probably. So I just duplicated the weebles because I'm going to do a... I did a command U to bring up hue saturation. I'm going to do colorize, which just pushes everything on those layer on that layer into one tone. And because I kind of give the weebles kind of a, a reddish tone. So I'm gonna kind of just stick with that for now. Okay. Um, and sometimes I'll, if I do that colorize on a layer above, I'll just lower the opacity just a little bit, and then some of the la the colors from the layers below it shine through just to kind of give it a little bit of different different colors you know and then i'll merge those together and now the weebles they're you know in the red tones but they're they have some other colors kind of infused into them all right i think we're at a pretty good spot there's this weird sand color i might want to adjust right here Let's put that a little bit brighter. I don't know. First, let me start with a base of our normal sand color. And then hide it. Let's see. Hide my selection. You know what? I kind of like it just like that. That's fine. OK. So there we go. Our flats are, our flats now have been kind of converted into our local colors. You know the 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 unlit, un, unlighted colors of our scene. Well, except except for the sand. The sand has a little light light source on it now. Um, but everything else is kind of close close to the local colors, I would say. So that's the end of this part. In the next part, we will add some shadows and probably textures. All right.